All right, so Rhythm of War comes out tomorrow when you're watching this video, and that means I wanted to do like a Cosmere related video, which I don't do that often on my channel, but this should still be accessible to everyone because I'm just gonna rank my Cosmere books. This was really hard. Sanderson and Cosmere books are on average four to five star books for me. There's a, it's very tight. So to expand that out and decide you're my number one, you're my number 15, that was hard, but I did it. I have a list and I'm gonna do what Elliot Brooks does when she does rankings. I'm gonna start in the middle and work my way out because I think she's right, that's kind of more interesting. So you'll get like my lower tier and my top tier at the same-ish time. So let's get into it. My number eight, this is gonna be Way of Kings. I really like this book. I think it's a fantastic starter book. I think it has some of the worst pacing issues in the Cosmere books though, and that's balanced out by amazing character arcs and world building. Like there's that balance there that for me makes it pretty middle of the road Cosmere. Um, if you don't know, this is the start of the Stormlight Archives, which is this epic fantasy where we follow characters as they try and learn why the world is heading towards an apocalyptic state and why magic is coming back and what that magic means. It's probably the most succinct way I can describe the Stormlight Archives and Way of Kings is the first one and I like it well enough. Number nine is going to be The Emperor's Soul. This is a novella that takes place on the same planet as the book Elantris. I am very bad. I don't know planet names off the top of my head. They're all in the Arcanum Unbound, but I don't memorize those things. But Emperor's Soul, like I always forget it's even a Cosmere book, not because it's not important. Actually, the discussions of the Cosmere are so cool in it. And I love the character and I love the story. I just, I need to reread it more. It actually has potential to go further up in the ranks when I reread it more, but I think I've only read it twice because I kind of always forget it's on my shelf. But it's really cool and I've heard recently it's getting a sequel. So that's pretty exciting. But this is the story of a woman who, um, so in Elantris you can use um, kind of symbols to enact magic, basically to invest things with certain qualities. And she is being told you have to basically remake this man, at least that's my memory, and it's kind of an impossible task. She has been caught for making forgeries of other things, so they think she can make this forgery of a man, and it's this really wonderful story. I always love it when I read it, and it has great Cosmere implications. I sometimes wonder where it should be on the list, but right now it's middle, but with more rereads could easily climb up because it's just beautiful. Number seven is Warbreaker. This is a story of two sisters who have to kind of maneuver a new city. Um, one sister is basically sold away to the God King to marry by her father. It was supposed to be the other sister. So the other sister goes on a rescue mission. The world has cool color magic. It's really fun. Um, for me, this is just a really fun book. It's what I read when I kind of want just like a fun little, not even really romance, but it has those like political intrigues, kind of cool women characters. Like it's, it's kind of the tropiest Sanderson book I've read, but in like really good ways. And so when I'm feeling that I want that tropiness and when I want that beautiful magic system, I, I pick it up, but it is one of my least reread Sanderson's. So it can't be like near the top, but I haven't reread my newest version yet. So it's, it's probably going to get reread within the next year because there are some beautiful images in that book. And I'm excited to read with those images. So number 10, similar to Emperor's Soul, I'm putting Secrets of Mistborn. Secrets of Mistborn was huge when it dropped. We didn't know it was coming. We didn't know the reveal. I still hold that if you want absolutely zero spoilers for Mistborn Era 2, you have to read it after Bands of Morning. Morning. Is it an important spoiler? Maybe not. It might not be important to you. But boy, can I tell you, I was not ready for it. I was blown away. So I'm biased because I remember not seeing it coming. So that's my experience, but you get so much behind the scenes of what's happening during the first era Mistborn trilogy, and you get to spend a lot of time in the cognitive realm, and it's one of the first books where you get that. So I like it. I don't reread it a lot. I think next time I reread first era Mistborn, I'll reread it. It's fun enough. It has huge Cosmere implications, but it's not a story that can stand on its own like Emperor's Soul can, so it had to be below that. Coming in at number six is the first Mistborn book, The Final Empire, or it's pretty much marketed as Mistborn. Call it either one. I don't really care. 
but this one's awesome. I just think it's not my favorite in the Mistborn trilogy, which is a story about this group of like thieves and rebels trying to overthrow the Lord Ruler in a world where metal is what powers the magic system. I, I really like it. Um, it's really all I have to say. I think the first book is a very good complete thought. I understand why a lot of people start there. I actually start a lot of people there myself if I think they're more action-packed driven readers. Um, but it's also not my favorite Mistborn book, so it just this is kind of where it fell when I was doing it. I have no other good reason for it. Number 11 is a new one, and it's Dawn Shard. Uh, as you saw, probably yesterday is probably when I posted the video. I have a spoiler free. It's spoiler free in terms of plot until the end where I freak out about world building. And you had to have read up through Oathbringer to be completely not spoiled. Because I feel like you can't talk about Dawn Shard without talking about Oathbringer and some of the things that happened there, at least. I don't know how you talk about Ryson without talking about what happened in Oathbringer. So that's my, that that's the review, but I had a lot of fun with it. I really like the characters. I, I just I had a great time. I haven't reread it, obviously, so I guess time will tell if this falls further down the list. Right now I'm kind of in the whole, I just learned a whole bunch of new stuff mode, so time will tell where it lands in the future. Number five, this I think moved up a lot. I don't think it was going to be number five if this was like two months ago, but Oathbringer. Oathbringer moved up. Oathbringer was traditionally probably my bottom half of the Cosmere books because that was a slog the first read personally. But in my next, this current read, I was just having a blast. I think it's just because when you know the destination, the journey is more fun. And I know the whole series, Journey Before Destination, I get it, but sometimes the journey's confusing and hard, and that's how it felt in the first read. And I think you'll notice as we get further up the list, the books that I find are more rewarding on rereads become all-time favorites and get higher up on the list, and Oathbringer has that trajectory. More so than I think Way of Kings. Way of Kings I've read four times, and honestly, I don't know how much more I'm going to read it. I probably won't read it like ten times, you know, like when each book comes out now, I feel like I know the main beats. I don't think there's that much more I learn in world building on each read, but at the same time, every time I pick it up, it's kind of cozy. But yeah, anyways, this is a side tangent, but Oathbringer was surprisingly really fun and I can see it getting even better on future rereads. Number 12 is Bands of Mourning, which is the third Mistborn Era 2 books. And it's my favorite of the Mistborn Era 2 books, spoiler alert, I guess for the rest of this list. And that's because of some side character developments, particularly with Steris. Steris is one of my favorite characters from that series and cool stuff happens with her character in this part. I think there's also really cool reveals from what I can remember. It's been like three or four years so this series is really due for a reread and could change where it is with rereads but I've been waiting for the fourth book forever <laughs> so I, I keep not wanting to reread it till I have that final book. But this is definitely like a lighter series. It's very fun. It's very detective noir-ish with western vibes. It's it's fun, but I I mean, I've only read Bands of Mourning once. And I do really like the character stuff and it's very funny for me, which is weird because I feel like sometimes I'm really miss with Sanderson humor, but in this series I just real I really like uh, Wayne. Well, I think Wayne's pretty funny. <laughs> All right, coming in at number four, it's Hero of Ages, the conclusion to the Mistborn trilogy. Um, it's a wonderful conclusion. I, whew, it gave me a book hangover in high school. So that's really all I have there is it's a wonderful ending in my opinion. Um, personally, I didn't see it coming, if you know what I'm talking about, but I also don't look for things, I guess. I don't look for surprises because if I do, maybe I'll guess them and then I'll have less fun personally. I think. There, there, you know, there's two camps. It's really exciting to guess and then be right. But I think for me, I just like to be surprised. So I don't overthink it, but I did not see it coming. Pretty sure my boyfriend did. But he sees everything Sanderson does coming and he's no fun. Number 13 is Alloy of Law. This is the first book in Mistborn Era 2. And I think there's some nostalgia for this and why it's up higher than, say, the second book. I honestly do feel like all three of these books are approximately equal tier in terms of writing and storytelling. But Alloy of Law came out in a Sanderson drought. <laughs> we didn't have Sanderson books and I buddy read that with a friend and we raced to finish it to the end and we just had a lot of fun. It was just a good Sanderson like shot of world building and 
to go back to the world of Mistborn and see how it's changed in 300 years was just super fun. So I think that one is higher than the sequel because I had more fun with it, just actually reading it and the nostalgia of when I read it. So yeah. Number three is Well of Ascension. This, like I said, this was a sleeper book. I don't think on my first read this was my favorite Mistborn book, but on rereads, every time I reread, Well of Ascension is the one that is the book that just keeps on giving in terms of world building within the book, Cosmere world building, character development and interactions. It's my favorite. Also has a twist that I didn't see coming, but that Ryan saw coming. But I just really like Well of Ascension. I feel like that's a book that, like I said, on a first read, I thought was too long. And now I'm like, I love every page of this. At least I have in my last two rereads of it. So that could change, but currently it's my favorite Miss Born Era one book. At number 14, I'm kind of putting the rest of the novellas in the Arcanum Unbound. So Edge Dancer, The Sixth of Dust, um, Shadow Rising, the, all of those that are in the Arcanum Unbound, I'm putting here because I like them all about the same. And I've also read all of them about once, except for Edge Dancer, which I've read twice. And it definitely, if I put it by itself, would be kind of down here. I do really like them. I need to do a reread, maybe in the next year or so. But they're really great little novellas. It's just that I don't reread them often, so they can't be like favorites. All right, so number two is Words of Radiance. I'm not sure if this is shocking to anyone, but I love Words of Radiance. That book, A, I read it in a time where I was very depressed. So it was really nice to have this book that I completely lost myself in. But it's also just objectively a wild, wild ride. The pacing is off the walls. The last like 400 pages are just insane. And the reveals and the character interactions, like up to that point, we've just had these great characters that were set up. But then here, we get to see them interact with each other. And it's just super fun. And I, it's my favorite Stormlight book right now. I'm still fine with something beating it one day. Just as of right now, nothing's beaten it. So it's my favorite. And that means my number 15. This is Shadows of Self. I just think it's my least favorite of Mistborn Era 2. There's nothing really wrong about it. Again, all these things at the bottom of the list I've read once, maybe twice, and it's just one of those things where maybe on rereads it would go up higher, but right now I just have like a first impression and it's obviously not a favorite enough that I like pick it up all the time. So that's what just where it fell. I have nothing against it. Just something had to be last. And number one, which I'm sure is not most people's number one, is Elantris. This is my baby. I love it so much. Um, what can I say? It, I, I, okay, objectively, not his best book. I get that. I see that. I hear you. But it's my favorite. It is my favorite. I have reread it the most. It's my comfort book. It's the book that if I am depressed, I will pick up and read. And I, being with those characters is so cathartic to me. It's the book that got me into adult fantasy. I am just... It's one of my favorite books ever. And it was really hard choosing between it or Words of Radiance, but I recently reread Words of Radiance and it didn't quite hit me as much as it had in the past. So, you know, everything changes on rereads, but I just felt like Elantris is just timeless for me. It's just a timeless story and I, I just really like it. I know he's grown as an author. I know the pacing's kind of wonky, but I love that world and the mystery and the magic system. But I'm very excited for tomorrow. The book's coming out. I'm just, I hope you guys are excited too if you're on the Rhythm of War train. And I guess I should have said this at the top of the video. If you're ever curious about where to start with Sanderson, I do have a video on it like everyone who loves the Cosmere. But my short answer, if you don't wanna watch that video, publication order. It's the simple answer. Do you wanna see reveals the way I saw them? Publication order. Um, Elliot Brooks does have a good one for the Stormlight archives that I do generally agree with, although I mean, I just think it's important you read Warbreaker before Words of Radiance and Oathbringer. That's the big thing. But if you read in publication order, you will. So publication order. That's, that's my advice. And otherwise, if you made it this far, let me know in the comments your favorite Cosmere book or story if you like one of the short stories the best. Like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.